To create your custom design, start by launching the design tool. And the first thing you need to do is set your surface details. It's important that you measure your space so that you can be sure to get an exact fit with our design. And then enter the dimensions of your space here. You don't need to put the full dimensions of a whole wall. What you want to think about is where the design will go. For example, I'm planning to apply my statement above a queen size bed. My queen size bed is 60 inches wide and I've got about 2 feet and 10 inches above it that I can decorate. So I'll enter the full 60 inches even though I really don't want my design to be the full 60 inches and this will let me see how it will look above my bed on the computer screen and then I can adjust the margins on either side according to how I like the look. Now that you have the size dimension set, you'll need to choose the color of your wall. This is just a feature to help you get an idea how the design will look in your home. You don't need to worry, there is no background included with your lettering. This is just a visual tool for you. Now the next step is to make our statement. You can select this text either by clicking this drag tab, as long as it says the original text here, or you can always just drag and select that way. Then delete this text and type in the statement you'd like to make. Now this is a great example of a very basic design. And just looking at my space, it's not going to take up enough vertical height for the way that I want it. So I'll go ahead and put this on two lines. And it does look a little funny being left justified, so I will center justify this. And while this design looks nice, I was thinking I wanted something a little more artistic. And the single font style isn't exactly what I had in mind. I do want to put it with two different fonts. So I'll go ahead and select this bottom text and cut it out by pressing Control X, backspace to get rid of that line. And now I'll add a text layer. Select that text, delete it, and now I'll push Control V to paste the text that I cut. Now I have two separate layers that I can modify independently from each other. To make a change to a layer, you need to simply select the layer you'd like to change, either by clicking on the text itself or on the drag tab above it. I'll start by changing the font of this top layer. And as you can see, all of our classic fonts are what pop up first. We also have whimsical, brush drawn, scripts, old world, and titling font categories. So feel free to browse around and choose your favorite. I'm going for a titling font, but I'm not super thrilled with this A looking different from the others, so I'll make that lowercase. And for the second layer, I'll change the font to something a little more handwritten to give it a kind of elegant look. Now, if you'd like to see the design without these drag tabs in the way, simply uncheck this drag tab visible box. And I'm really liking the direction of this, but the color does not match my decor at all. So the colors in my room are kind of dark gray and white. And since I've already ordered my color samples and I've checked them out in my room and made sure they look good with my decorations and that they show up well on my wall, I know that they're going to look great in the room. I always encourage people to request free color samples before they get a custom design because we don't accept returns on custom designs. So you want to make sure that your design is exactly the way that you want it. Now I'd like to change the size of my statement to be more attractive in this space. It's just a little bit small over my bed. I'm going to want it to stand out a bit more, so I'll make it bigger. Now if I make it too big, it's going to extend from each end of my bed, and that's going to actually be gigantic if you think about a queen size bed. It's not actually going to be visually appealing either to extend the full width, so I'm going to give it a little bit more of a margin on either side. And I like this much better. It's still large enough to be a statement, but it's not going to be overpowering. 
Now I'll change the size on this. And one thing to note about the sizing is that this number, you may be tempted to say, oh, that must be that I'm changing this to be 10 inches. And that's not the case at all. That number is referencing the size of this box from the top of this box to the bottom of this box, assuming that you're looking at one line text. If you add a line, that's not going to change that number, but that's, that's what the measurement is representative of. If you are curious about the actual inches of your lettering, you'll need to drag it into the corner and use the rule bars that we have on the top and the left side of the design tool. So if you were to count how tall this A is, it's about five inches. And if you were to want to know the width, it's about 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 28 and a half inches wide. So go ahead and just position it the way that you want. And one more note about the price of your design. Our price is based on two things, the amount of letters or characters that you have in your design and the size of those letters or characters. Things that won't change the price are extra space returns or extra spaces. So if you have an extra character like a one, a number, a letter or punctuation, you will be charged extra for that, but you won't be charged extra for any spaces or carriage returns that you do. So I like this design. I really love where this is going, but it's missing something. I'd like to add an embellishment, and the way to do this is to click Add Embellishment Layer and choose from one of these categories here. I'm looking for something maybe ornamental, and I like this embellishment. When an embellishment appears on the screen, it will always go to the top left corner of the design tool. So you'll have to select it by clicking right on the design. It has to be the actual design you're clicking on, not on the white space underneath, or else it won't show, it won't grab it. You can tell when you're about to select it because your cursor will change to a little hand. And that's how you can select it, move it around, and change things about it. So I'm going to change the color to be white, and I'd like to make it a little larger. The size of embellishments is different from the font sizes in that this number does represent the width in inches of this embellishment. So this particular embellishment is measured from side to side because it's a wide embellishment. If it was a tall embellishment, it would be measured from top to bottom. So you'll be looking at the largest dimension of the embellishment for that number. So I like the way that this looks. I want to give this some overlap here. Now, when you receive your statements in the mail, each layer will arrive on its own individual sheet. So you can position each layer however you would like by applying the correct layer first on the wall to choose which one will go in the background and then which one will be overlapping. So it's not essential that you have it correctly while looking in the design tool. However, if you would like to see how it would look, all you need to do is select a layer to bring it to the front. One note about the layers and overlapping is if you have a layer that's completely covered by another, you won't be able to click on the back layer to select it without moving the overlapping layer out of the way. One last note about layers. If you have a layer in your design that you don't want to have anymore, say you change your mind or you got there by accident, don't drag it off of the screen. That will leave you paying for all of those letters in that statement. Don't delete the text because that's just going to be confusing to you when you see a layer in your cart that doesn't have any text involved. Go ahead and click this delete current layer button. That's the way to get rid of any layer, be it an embellishment layer or a text layer. And the way to do so is to click on the layer that you want to delete first and then click delete current layer. So once you have your design laid out the way that you like, you can go ahead and see the price down in the bottom right and add it to your cart.
When a design has been added to your cart, you will see it in this format here. Each layer will be described by listing the text, the font, the color, and the size, as well as the justification centered left or whatever it was. It doesn't have to be in order. Remember, the order isn't going to be important. And you'll want to notice this reference number that's made available to you. I would recommend writing it down because if you ever want to have your design referenced in the future by us or by yourself, you'll need that number to look it up. You can do that immediately if you'd like to call us about your design or you can do it in the far future, say if you paint or move and want to reorder the design. Another option you can use is to click on either this link here or this link or the picture and your design will pop back into our tool. You can modify this design, but keep in mind if you add it to your cart, it will add a second custom design to your cart. The new design will always be put at the bottom of the list, so if you made a change that you would prefer to use, just delete the old design by clicking this shopping cart with an X in it on the left of the design you want to remove. If you open the design and you find that everything is as you would like and you don't want to make any changes, just click on the back button in your browser. So thank you for watching our tutorial today, and I hope it will help you to make a statement with your decor.